Welcome back to The Peric Project. I'm Gila Ross, host of the Power Up podcast. I'm a mum of eight and I'm really passionate about sharing how much relatable wisdom Judaism can offer our modern day lives. I've been in Jewish education, informal Jewish education now for over 15 years. And one of, I think, the hardest questions that I get asked is, why do the wicked prosper? Well, sometimes we see good people who suffer. Such a hard question, and one that we're going to try and look at in this episode of The Peric Project. Now, if you've ever had that question, the first thing to know is that you're in good company. It's an age-old question. It's a question that we as human beings have been grappling with for a long, long time. Even Moses, who was able to speak to God, struggled with this question. He asked God, show me your ways. He wanted understanding of how it can be that we see sometimes wicked people and they have such a good life and we see sometimes such good people and they suffer. And in fact, we're told that God showed him different storehouses of blessings. And he, Moses was asking, what is this storehouse? What is that storehouse? And there were storehouses for people that did good deeds. And there were storehouses for people that studied Torah. And then God showed him the biggest storehouse of blessing of all of them. And Moses asked, who is this one for? And this, and God said, this storehouse is of blessing is for people that don't deserve anything. Why was that the biggest storehouse of blessings? Surely it should have been the one where people earn their blessings that was bigger. But no, the one where God gives freebies was almost limitless. It was the biggest because when we earn, when we do a good deed, that's finite. That's the amount of blessing we, we get for that is finite. But what the Medrash is telling us with this story is that God's kindness is limitless. And therefore, the, the storehouse of blessing for people that don't necessarily deserve it, for freebies, as you will, that one was the biggest of all. Sometimes understanding that there is a world to come and that this plays into it, helps us understand. Because a righteous person, a good person, they are going to get rewarded for their good actions in the world to come, where the pleasures of the world to come are for eternity, and they are beyond comparison to what a person can enjoy in this world. And they may have to pay and correct the negative things that they've done in this world. Similarly, a a, a person, an, a bad person, who's not interested in the world of truth, in the world to come, they are going to get rewarded for their good actions in this world. But perhaps the most freeing answer is for us to understand what the Mishnah is telling us, that it is beyond our understanding. We as human beings, we have a limited understanding and we also have a limited view of 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 the world of people and of the world and with our limited knowledge and understanding this topic of why good people sometimes suffer and bad people sometimes prosper is beyond our our level of understanding interestingly enough rabbi hirsch points out on this on this line that we can't judge the fate of another person and their moral worth. Because the truth is, we don't know enough about another person and and their moral worth and their motivations to know whether what is happening for them is actually a blessing or a tragedy. Sometimes in our own life, we think something's happening at the time. It seems one way. And then when we wait later on, we realize that actually that was a negative thing. That was a positive thing. Sometimes, you know, I've heard so many times people have lost a job only to find out later that they're in a much better situation. So we can't let our limited vision influence our judgments of other people and their situations. With this in mind, 
The next Mishnah advises us that we should always be the ones to initiate a greeting to every single person, regardless of whether that person is good or bad. It validates another person and we have to take the initiative to reach out and make peace with all people. Don't wait for someone else to come and approach us to build a relationship, but we should go out there and be proactive in building peace and building our relationships. Our attitude should be one of considering other people important while minimizing how much we worry about our importance. Interestingly enough, the other day my daughter asked me a question. We were talking about how in schools they'll have different classes based on abilities and she said to me, would you rather be the top of a lower class or the bottom of a higher ability class? And it made me think, because obviously it feels better to be the top of a lower ability class but after much thought I thought to myself we can go further if we are the bottom of a lower or of the higher class and this is what the mission is also telling us it tells us be a tail to the lions rather than a head to the foxes what does it mean it's better to be a follower of great people than a leader of people, of lesser people. It's preferable to be the least distinguished member of an elite group than the most distinguished member of a lesser group. It may feel better the other way, but we can go further when we are part of a, of a group that reaches for growth the whole time. Thank you for listening as we explored this age-old topic of why bad things happen sometimes and how we should be the ones to initiate peace and to always pursue growth. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Did it conjure up any feelings within you when you were listening? You can get in touch with me via Instagram. I'm on, you can find me there at Gila Ross. And if you got something out of this podcast, please give us a like or a rating or a review and share the word. Thank you so much and have a great day.